Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Morgana and today I'm going to be demonstrating for you these beautiful golden spring daffodils. I'm beginning today by sketching out some simple uh, daffodil heads and stems on my paper which I've already taped down uh, and then I've filled them in with masking fluid. I use Pebeo brand drawing gum but you can use whichever one works for you. I've also added a few extra little wispy uh, lines and stems and grasses coming up from the bottom there. These are the areas that I'd like to keep white before I put on my, uh, my beautiful wash of colour that's going to make up the background of this painting. As you can see, I'm starting today by simply wetting the paper all over with a small brush. You can use a larger brush if you like, use whichever brush works for you. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm getting into all the sort of lines between the masking fluid, making sure that paper is really lovely and soaked. Uh, I'm using Saunders Waterford paper today. It's 100% cotton uh, and cold pressed and 140 pound weight which means uh, it's absorbing this water really well. You can see it has buckled a little bit, uh, but really not that much, which means it's still uh, perfectly lovely to paint on. And uh, my first paint here is the very beautiful Quinacridone Gold, uh, or Quin Gold, as I will be referring to it as for the rest of this video, as that is rather a mouthful, but um, it's such a beautiful paint, I think uh, it deserves it deserves its full title occasionally. Um, really in love with that gold colour, which I've put coming down from the uh, top right corner. Uh, just the idea of this beautiful uh, golden sunlight streaming down from the top of the painting there over these lovely flowers. And now I'm working a little green in up from the bottom. Uh, this is going to be the base for my foliage and for these lovely daffodils. This is sap green that I'm using. Uh, all of these colours are Windsor and Newton colours. Uh, I will pop a full list of all the uh, bits and bobs that I use in the video description. You can see that now I've washed in my uh, basic uh, colours, basically the green and the yellow. I'm using the edge of this flat brush to start uh, bringing in a little darker paint and marking in some uh, lovely sharp uh, directional lines which are going to serve as the sort of background foliage uh, for this painting. Basically, as I'm putting these in wet on wet, uh, the idea is that the colour will diffuse out softly after it goes on, uh, so it will give the impression of being slightly misty and slightly fuzzy and out of focus uh, in the background, uh, the way that you would see perhaps a photograph of these lovely daffodils, with the background slightly blurry, but the, uh, the flowers uh, sharper and in focus. I'm also adding some perylene green into the mix here. This is a lovely, rich, uh, deep, dark green. You can see I'm just using really quick, uh, sharp brush strokes to really pull some directionality out of this uh, and just add in those lovely shapes which are going to form our beautiful backdrop. I'm using a one inch flat brush for this. But uh, obviously, use whatever you uh, use, whatever you like, whatever you feel comfortable using. And for a last touch in these lovely grasses, some lovely directional strokes of uh, a little extra of the twin gold that was left on my palette. I have just literally picked it up with my brush without bothering to wash it after the green, which is why it now looks sort of murky and uh, well greenish. <laughs> Um, I'm also putting a little bit of burnt umber in there just to get a little bit of extra depth and dark colour right at the base of the painting. I try not to bring that too high uh, into the rest of the painting. I want it to be filled with uh, golden light, 
but uh, we do need a little bit of shadow to complement that uh, down there at the bottom of the paper. Now I'm going to add a sprinkling of table salt. Uh, this creates a lovely effect in the background wash. My paper is uh, still a little damp. It's not fully wet, it's not wet and glossy. It's absorbed a lot of the water. You can see I'm just sprinkling it on quite liberally there uh, in the areas that I want these uh, tiny little salt crystals to create these wonderful white uh, salt blooms that you will see uh, starting to form. Uh, this is a lovely technique but it does take a little bit of practice and um, it is a little bit unpredictable. This is what it looks like about uh, two minutes after I put the salt on and this is after about 10. You can see the uh, little salt blooms forming and this is what I ended up with uh, once the painting was dried. I've brushed all the salt off. You can see these little white patches have been created, these lovely little blooms. Uh, I really like this effect. I think it brings a lovely uh, dapplement to the golden light, uh, like little seeds or little wisps of something in the air, little fireflies or mayflies maybe, something beautiful. Uh, all I'm doing now is just removing the masking fluid. Um, you could also add some more paint over the top here at this stage, but uh, I decided to pull it all off and, and see what we had. You can either use just your finger there or a simple eraser. The thing about the masking fluid, however, is that you can see with this uh, lovely daffodil that I sketched out earlier, uh, all of these daffodils, in fact, it has taken off most of the paint pencil detail that I put in. Uh, so if you need that guideline, do as I did and go in with your pencil again. Just take a couple of minutes to uh, pop that in, uh, pop the pencil detail uh, back in as a guideline for where you're putting your colour. So the first thing I'm doing now is using this lovely brush. This is a sword liner brush from Pro Art. It's a lovely uh, synthetic brush with a really long, uh, long, well, <laughs> it's a long brush. <laughs> it uh, holds a wonderful amount of water and paint together, and you can see it's giving me the opportunity to do these uh, lovely long, wistful, and wispy grasses here that's going to be our sort of foreground foliage. Uh, in these lovely lawn strokes without having to continuously go back and dip all the time into uh, the paint. Uh, you can of course use any brush for this. You could use a rigger brush also to great effect. Um, but yes, this is uh, how I'm putting in my foreground foliage for now. I'm using sap green again and right now I'm using some more perylene green to just add a little bit of extra line, definition and shadow to these lovely grasses. So now that I've done that, uh, I've decided to start filling in these lovely daffodils. I'm using a rigger brush for this. Uh, you could also, I could also use the um, the sword liner, but as it comes to quite a uh, sharp point, uh, it almost tends towards the uh, italic if you get it at the wrong angle. And these stems I want to be uh, lovely and smooth, so I'm using the rigger for a greater amount of control. Um, something like a round brush, a flat brush, or perhaps a calligraphy brush would also work really well here. Um, I'm using again the sap green that I have mixed with a little bit of quin gold to uh, give it an extra little brighter touch. And I'm just going to go along the stem here uh, in parts and just add in little dots of colour, little dots of light and shadow, a little bit of perylene green for the occasional bit of shading, 
just to get some nice, uh, just to get some really nice colour on here. Now I'm just doing the same with the second stem. I've decided that I wanted these uh, stems to be a little bit lighter than the original paint that I put in. So what I've done on the original one is I've gone through and wiped just a little bit of tissue through it. You can see it looks paler than it did a moment ago. Um, <laughs> I forgot to set my camera to record that moment, but I'm gonna show it again uh, in just a minute with this other daffodil stem. Um, I've mixed up a lighter green with uh, a little more quin gold added uh, and I'm just using that now for the stems and I'm adding a little bit of extra burnt umber around the uh, the very top where the, uh, the, the outer layer of the bud would have pulled back and shriveled and darkened slightly as the flower bloomed outwards. There we are, see just a little folded piece of tissue taking up a little bit of paint there. You just fold it so that it's sharp and then just run it up the stem carefully just with a very light touch and it just takes off any excess paint, it takes out any uh, excess colour. You can see there I've got this lovely light uh, golden shining uh, daffodil stem now. Right, so now I've got all the stems painted in using exactly the same technique I just showed you and I've done a few extra grasses on the left side, you can see they've popped in there <laughs> uh, and that was done with exactly the same technique that I showed you with the sword liner and using a combination of sap green and perylene green just dotting them around there, no real plan, just popping them in wherever it looked like uh, they should go uh, and now I'm just going to show you the flower painting. This is um, a lovely cadmium yellow that I'm using here uh, and I am just going around petal by petal and I'm going to fill them in uh, sort of with varying degrees of uh, transparency, trying to get a lovely uh, warm golden glow to these flowers. Just imagining that lovely golden sunlight coming in from above and just lighting them up uh, perhaps with a rich sort of sunset kind of sunlight. Just absolutely love the warmth of this twin gold and the cadmium yellow uh, working together. You can see I'm actually putting in a little touch of uh, twin gold just at the tip of that top left petal there. I'm going to use it to come in and do an extra little bit of shading and detail later as well. Uh, my apologies as well if you can hear any music during this video. My lovely neighbour likes to uh, play her music very loudly at the uh, the most inconvenient moments, so uh, if you can hear anything extra, my apologies for that. Here we are, so the first little bits of extra detail with the twin gold 
going in wet on wet there into the petals just to get a little bit of extra detail and shading and just to make them look really, really pretty and golden. You can see there that all I did was just uh, scrunch up a little piece of tissue and use that to quickly and carefully blot out uh, a little excess bit of colour there. Decided I wanted a paler sort of flat colour on the petal to then uh, pop a bit more detail in. This is one of the uh, really lovely and wonderful things about watercolour. Uh, while it's still wet and if you're quick and if you're careful, uh, you can make these little changes uh, as you go. So if you put a colour on and you think, oh, that's far too strong, then uh, just use some tissue or some kitchen towel and just see if you can very quickly and carefully blot it out uh, and it sort of, uh, it gives you another chance, really. Uh, it means you can go again and put on a, uh, a lighter wash next time. Um, I am spending rather a long time on these petals just because I really want them uh, to have um, a beautiful uh, detailed look but obviously uh, trying not to make it too contrived going in and adding that extra little detail there I'm not going to show you doing every single one otherwise we'd be here <laughs> we'd be here a little while uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just show you the finished uh, rest of the daffodils in just a moment uh, I use exactly the same technique as you've just seen here to fill in the petals on the other flowers. Ta-da! <laughs> there we are, the magic of editing. Uh, now this top one is dry, I'm going back in and adding some extra detail uh, using wet on dry there to just uh, differentiate and give some sharper little strokes on those petals, just getting a little extra detail with the uh, twin gold. Um, I'm using a flat brush for anyone who's interested. This is uh, quite a simple, basic um, synthetic watercolour flat brush. It's a size uh, size zero uh, out of my pack, so it's the smallest size. Uh, obviously you could use whichever brush you fancy for this, but I do like the uh, directionality you get with a flat brush and its ability to turn it on its side so you get those lovely thin directional lines. So now you can see I'm just filling in the last part of these daffodils, the, uh, the, the trumpet part, the central part of the flower. I'm not sure if trumpet is its uh, correct technical term, but it's what it always looks like to me. Uh, so trumpet it is for now. Uh, I'm using a very weak uh, cadmium yellow here, just because I want these to uh, differentiate slightly and be a little paler. But um, I probably will go in and make them a little bit, a little bit brighter. But uh, starting, as always, with watercolour, with your palest shade, and then working it down to being a little darker, um, as and when you need to.
now just adding that extra little uh, sort of frilly detail around the edge, the outer edge of these lovely trumpets using again the Quinn Gold, using a slightly richer uh, concentration so you get that sort of deeper, richer hue which um, I think works nicely with the cadmium yellow gives it that lovely golden tone again but it also uh, separates out that part of the flower which is often looks uh, a lot darker than the rest because of course it's uh, sort of beveled and frilly and catches the light and creates these little wiggles of shadow. Now that's the flowers done and of course I couldn't resist going in and adding a little more detail uh, with the sword liner. <laughs> it really is just so much fun uh, and I love being able to add in these lovely wispy grasses. Um, I think they add so much extra dimension to uh, any sort of botanical painting really. Just give it that extra little bit of background and a bit of depth and a bit of context. Now for the finishing touch, I'm just adding some lovely wild spatters of paint. Uh, I'm using a fan brush dipped in quite a loose mixture of paint and then simply tapping that quite uh, sternly against the handle of another brush to get these spatters to come off. I'm holding it quite low over the paper, you can see there, to make sure they go in the place uh, where I need them to. Uh, I'm doing some um, burnt umber spatters first, this lovely dark brown colour. Oh, and bumping into the camera whilst I'm doing it, of course. <laughs> um, I'm concentrating the burnt umber around the sides and the base, sort of the bottom of the painting, just to uh, tie into those lovely sort of darker earthy colours that really root and uh, ground these daffodils in the earth. But I'm also doing some more. I'm going to do some uh, lovely... Uh, golden spatters as well. This is the Quin Gold that I'm splattering on wildly now. Um, I'm putting this more around the centre of the painting and more around the top right corner as well where we have that lovely salt detail and knocking the camera again. <laughs> this is just uh, a really fun uh, technique to use. I often like to use it to finish my uh, botanical paintings these days so they don't look too stiff and too formal. Uh, here we go, there we go, is the finished painting, got the tape taken off, got this lovely white border. Uh, I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. I think it's got that lovely rich golden sort of evening sunlight that I was looking for. Um, the salt went a bit wild, but you know what, I really don't mind. Um, and I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, as much as I enjoyed painting it. So thank you very much for watching friends, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you're not already, uh, and please consider checking me out on my Patreon page as well. Uh, that's all from me, so thank you again and I will look forward to seeing you all in the next video.